When it comes to these improper limits that you may have seen before, let's think in terms of Taylor series and see what we can infer from that. Let's go back to that example of a sine limit, that limit as x goes to zero of sine of x over x. Let's use what we know about Taylor expansion, right? We know what sine of x is about zero. I can replace that numerator with x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial. Keep going, keep going. What do we notice? If we think about that sine series as being a long polynomial, then we can factor an x from every single term. When we do so, what is left over is 1 minus x squared over 3 factorial plus x to the 4th over 5 factorial minus x to the 6th over 7 factorial and then a whole bunch of other terms. Now that we've factored out an x from the numerator, we see that it cancels with the x in the denominator. And what are we left with? We're left with the limit as x goes to 0 of 1 minus x squared over 3 factorial plus x to the 4th over 5 factorial and a whole lot of other terms, all of which have higher order x. Now, you see exactly where this is going. This is no longer a difficult limit to evaluate. I just plug in x equals 0 and we're left with 1. That is what we were supposed to get. This method works. Taylor expanding about this point really reveals why the limit as x goes to 0 of sine x over x equals 1. But that's not the only example that this works on. What about that cosine example? Let's replace that numerator sine of x with 1 minus cosine of x. Now, in the numerator of this limit, we have 1 minus the series for cosine. That's 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial. Keep going, keep going, keep going. What do we see? Well, let's see. First of all, those 1s in the numerator, they cancel. And what is left over is minus quantity minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial, a whole bunch of other terms. Again, we can factor out an x from the numerator because every term has at least some powers of x in it. We can cancel out with the x in the denominator and we are left with the limit as x goes to 0 of x over 2 factorial minus x cubed over 4 factorial and then a whole bunch of other terms, all of which have higher and higher degrees or powers in x. Since every single term of this series has an x in it, when you evaluate at x equals 0, you get 0. Again, this is why the limit as x goes to 0 of 1 minus cosine of x over x vanishes. The big idea is that when you Taylor expand about a limit point, that reveals local information about the function. In the case of a difficult limit, a tricky limit, that can really make the difference. Well, speaking of difficult limits, let's see how this works in a particular example. Consider the limit as x goes to 0 of, in the numerator, 1 minus quantity 1 plus 4x to the 1 third, that is the cube root of 1 plus 4x, and in the denominator, 1 minus the fifth root of quantity 1 plus 3x. Now notice that this is an improper limit. If I substitute in x equals 0, I get 0 over 0. But we can think about this from a Taylor perspective. How? Aha, the binomial series. Remember how that works. That is perfectly set up for things of the form 1 plus something to the alpha. So if we take this limit, we note that in the numerator, we have an example where alpha is 1 third. And in the denominator, we have an example where alpha is 1 fifth. So, writing out what happens in the numerator, we have 1 minus quantity, 1, and then the next term in the binomial series is 1 third times quantity 4x. The next term is, let's see, 1 third times negative 2 thirds, all divided by 2 factorial. That's negative 1 ninth times quantity 4x squared, and then there's uh, all those other terms. 
in the denominator. We have one minus quantity one plus one fifth times quantity three x. And then let's see, one fifth times negative four fifths divided by two factorial, that's negative two twenty fifths times quantity three x squared, and then a whole bunch of other terms. Now notice, we have some cancellation going on. Those ones, those all go away. And what's left over is a set of terms, all of which have x's in them. So in particular, we can factor out an x from the numerator, from the denominator, and what do we get? Ah, we have in the numerator negative 4 thirds plus 16 ninths times x, and then a lot of other terms, all of which have higher and higher powers in x. In the denominator, what remains after factoring out an x is negative 3 fifths plus 18 over 25 times x, and then higher order terms. Now, notice that when we cancel out those x's and try to evaluate at x equals 0, then it's the leading order terms that matter. Everything that's a higher order term, it's vanishing. It's going away. The only thing that matters is those leading order terms. So this limit evaluates to negative 4 thirds divided by negative 3 fifths. That is 20 ninths. That's a little bit surprising to me. Sometimes you look at these limits, you're like, I know what that one's going to work out to be. But this one, mm, not so much. You look at it, and your brain does not say, oh, yeah, well, 20 ninths. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know that. So this is a good example of how to use Taylor expansion to evaluate some really difficult improper limits. We are by no means done with this idea, however. This is just the beginning. We could do a dozen more examples. But before we get to anything like that, we have one more topic to cover.